In this video, I'm going to show you a great and ideal team centered around Charizard, the weaker choice of the starters. This team will feature six Pokemon that will help Charizard defeat many challenges it can't defeat alone. Now, there's a handful of rules we must follow for this team. No trade evolutions, no post-game Pokemon, and no version exclusives unless they're in more than one game. So now that I explained the rules, how about we jump right into this challenge? Before we begin the list, I should point out that we need temporary Pokemon to help the journey a lot still. We'll catch a flying type to help fly us across the map, we'll catch a Rattata to help with many trainers before getting our grass type, we'll also get an extra grass type to help cut trees down, and we'll get a Hitmonchan to help push boulders aside. Those Pokemon will help us build our team and to get across challenges our main team isn't able to. Beginning the main list proper, we have our starter, Charizard. One thing that makes Charizard good is because of its good stats and moves, hits decently and has high speed. Charizard is a fire flying type, might not be good against the first two gyms, but is good against the grass gym and a few other trainers in Kanto. The way to get Charizard is simple. Soon after you start the game and Oak takes you to his lab, choose the Pokeball containing Charmander. Then during your journey, you can train Charmander up to level 16 to evolve into Charmeleon, then train again to level 36 to evolve into Charizard. A good move set for Charizard would be Slash as its go-to move, has many power points and always gets a critical hit. Body Slam being another go-to move, easily paralyzing the opponent and has a high damage output. Fire Blast also being helpful, has a great damage output and a high chance of causing a burn. Mimic will also be helpful, allowing Charizard to copy one of the opponent's moves. Charizard will do okay against Brock due to his rock types having bad special, but will do best against Erica, Sabrina, Lorelai's Jinx, Bruno, and Blue's Alakazam and Executor. Next on the list is the bulky tank from earlier, Victory Bell. Victory Bell is useful because it's decently bulky and has great attack and special. Victory Bell is also great because it's a grass poison type, strong against the second gem as well as many opponents in Kanto. Getting Victory Bell is simple. Beat the trainers on Nugget Bridge, go into the grass and catch Bell Sprout. Train up Bell Sprout to level 21 to evolve into Weeping Bell, then go to the department store and buy a Leaf Stone to use on Weeping Bell to get Victory Bell. A great move set for Victory Bell would be Razor Leaf as its go-to move. Great power points and always critical hits. Solar Beam is back up yet again. Takes two turns but hits very hard. Wrap is another go-to move. Stops the opponent from moving for two to five turns. Sleep Powder also being helpful. Puts the opponent to sleep for one to eight turns. Sleep's very broken in Gen 1 as I said before. Just like earlier, Victory Bell would do best against Misty, Lieutenant Surge, Giovanni's Ground Types, and Kangaskhan. Lorelai except Jinx, Bruno, and Blue's Rhydon and Blastoise. Next on the list is a Psychic Glass Cannon, Kadabra. Kadabra is very useful because it has high speed and special. Kadabra is also great because it's a Psychic type, the single best type in Kanto. Again, offensively and defensively great. The way to get Kadabra is simple. First, you must obtain the coin case from a building near Celadon Gym, then go to the game corner and get enough coins to get Abra. Train up Abra to level 16 to evolve into Kadabra. Keep it as Kadabra because it won't become Alakazam without a trade. A good move set for Kadabra would be Psybeam, has good power points and does good damage. Psychic being a go-to move, having far better damage output and sometimes drops the opponent's special. Seismic Toss also being helpful, doing level equivalent damage for more balanced damage output. Substitute being another go-to move, enabling Kadabra to withstand most attacks that aren't physical. Kadabra will do best against Erika, Koga, Sabrina, Giovanni, Bruno, Agatha, and Blue's Alakazam, Rhydon, and Executor. Up next again is the Glass Cannon, Jolteon. The reason Jolteon's great is because of high special and speed, also has good moves. Jolteon's also great because it's a fast electric type, hitting hard against most opponents in Kanto. Getting Jolteon is also easy. When you get to Celadon, go behind one of the tall buildings and enter. When you get to the top room, grab the Eevee on the desk. Then go to the department store, buy a Thunderstone and use it on Eevee to get Jolteon. A good move set for Jolteon would be Double Edge to make Psychic types less annoying. Reflect being helpful at reducing physical damage to Jolteon. Thunderbolt is its go-to move, hitting water and flying types very hard, and Thunder being there as backup. Again, it has terrible accuracy, but it's very powerful. A nice filler move. 
Like before, Jolteon will do best against Lorelei, Agatha's Golbat, Lance's Gyarados and Aerodactyl, and Blue's Pidgeot and Blastoise. Next on the list, we have the physical tank, Rhydon. Rhydon's great because it has high HP, attack, and defense, as well as good moves. Rhydon's also useful because it's a ground rock type, being able to resist many moves from opponents in Kanto. Getting Rhydon is also simple. Go to the Safari Zone in Kanto, head to the northern area, and catch Rhyhorn. Afterwards, train up Rhyhorn to level 42 to evolve into Rhydon. A good move set for Rhydon would be Horn Attack, has good power points and does good damage, Rock Slide being there as coverage to hit annoying flying types, Earthquake is its main move, hitting Fire, Electric, Poison, and Rock types very hard, also Dig being there in case Earthquake runs low on power points. Again, both moves are identical. Rhydon will do best against Lieutenant Surge, Koga and Blaine, Giovanni's Poison types, Agatha, and Blue's Pidgeot and Arcanine. Last but not least, we have the bulky fish, Cloyster. Might be surprising, but Cloyster's great too. It has high defense and balanced stats, also has good moves. Cloyster's useful because it's a water ice type, being offensively powerful against many opponents in Kanto. Getting Cloyster is tricky. First you should get the Super Rod, then go to Vermilion City's Harbor and fish for Shelter. Then go to the department store, buy a water stone, and use it on Shelter to evolve into Cloyster. A great move set for Cloyster would be Bubble Beam, again doing good damage and having good power points. Surf is its go-to move, hitting Fire Rock and Ground types very hard. Ice Beam is great coverage, hitting Grass Flying and Dragon types very hard. Explosion also being helpful against certain foes for an easier win despite Cloyster feigning after using it. Cloyster will do best against Blaine, Giovanni, Bruno's Rock types, Agatha's Golbat, Lance Except Gyarados, and Blue's Pidgeot, Rhydon, and Arcanine. Finally, we finished the ideal teams for all three starters at Kanto. Might be a surprise too, but Kanto was the easiest region to make a Pokemon team in. Very simple creatures, types, and moves easily make for a great first Pokemon journey. Now that we got ideal teams done for Kanto, I'll be covering the ideal teams for Johto next. They'll feature some Pokemon from Kanto but have some Johto Pokemon in them. Hey look, that's all I got for now. If you enjoyed this ideal team layout, please leave a like or comment telling me what you enjoyed the most about this video and the other two team videos. Until next time, have a good day.